The second installment of the report into state capture was released this week. And while its contents confirmed the rot at state enterprises like Transnet and arms manufacturer Danel, the response of a weary public remained the same. So what now? In part two of our look at the so-called Zonda report and its fallout, Masa asks whether the orchestrators of state capture will ever face justice. It's not often that you get one-on-one -on -one interviews with the Minister of Justice and the National Director of Public Prosecutions. Their mandate is simple, ensure justice is served. But it's often easier said than done. Last week, we introduced you to three people who were fundamental in the fight back against state capture. History will record that not every South African was silent. We stood up publicly. We've pointed to where the bad people are. Did I do the right thing? Would I do it again? I don't have any shade of a doubt that I, I would do it again. Their courage to speak out was just the first step. We've got some truth. We need that truth to be converted into justice. The country can wait another 10 years for those who are responsible to be prosecuted. It has to happen now. Three years and close to one billion rand in taxpayer money later, the findings of the Zondo Commission of Inquiry into State Capture are finally being released. Whistleblowers have been vindicated. What we've all already known has been confirmed. Again, unprecedented grand corruption. State-owned entities captured. The facilitators named and shamed. The first two parts of the report have honed in on state capture henchmen from government and the private sector, calling for criminal charges and prosecution. The ball is now in the court of the South African justice system. It's time to put those in charge in the hot seat. The report was scathing. It held no punches, painting a picture of a country robbed and a broken criminal justice system, raising questions around capacity and capability. It's not just a scathing picture, it's the reality that the commission has actually sketched. Advocate Shamila Batoy admits the National Prosecuting Authority has been decimated by state capture. For many years in South Africa, there was absolutely no will to bring these cases to court. In fact, there was a will to make sure that they never come to court. And I understand the frustrations of people in South Africa to see prosecutions faster. As a citizen of this country, I am frustrated, but as the national director, you must do something about it. But many may argue that the NPA is not doing enough about it. The Gupta family is still at large having fled to the United Arab Emirates in 2018. Their alleged looting amounts to a whopping 57 billion rand, but the true cost to the state is estimated to be even higher. Ronald Lamola is the Minister of Justice. What's the plan of action to recover some of the funds that were looted from our country? We are ready as the Department of Justice to recover money in any jurisdiction. Yeah. So does that mean any time soon we'll be seeing your teams flying across our borders and getting people who are involved like the Guptas? There's a process of extradition. Obviously that is still being processed through the relevant channels, but I believe that extradition will happen at, uh, at some point. As a society, just to see some of these people brought to justice would be so satisfying and would set a benchmark then for further successes. Professor Molly Painter is from the Gibbs Center for Business Ethics. She says South Africans are tired of waiting. Change starts one action at a time, so people can talk a lot, but at some point you just have to take the first step, take the first action and follow on. Criticism has been that you could have run these investigations concurrently with the commission. The Zondo Commission is a commission of inquiry. It does not investigate to the standard that is required before one can bring criminal charges. And understand also that there's a lot of information in the Commission that we will get full access to only when the work of the Commission is completed. The NPA has its work cut out with the findings of the Zondo Commission. Part 1 lists at least 20 of the key orchestrators that drove the crippling looting of SAA and SARS that list includes Dudu Mieni, Brian Molefe, and Tom Moyani. Part 2 singles out Transnet as the primary site of state capture in financial terms and also focuses on Denal, a once highly regarded organization that is now almost on its knees, unable to pay staff.
Do you think in our lifetime we will be seeing those who have been fingered in this report actually wearing orange overalls? Yeah, definitely, those that um, <clears throat> will be found guilty, they will definitely go to, to jail. The minister may sound somewhat optimistic, but to be fair, the investigating directorate has had some successes on high-profile corruption cases linked to state capture. In October 2020, the first big arrests were made in the Bosasa matter, the 2010 World Cup police accommodation scandal and the Free State Asbestos deal that centered around a 255 million rand audit of asbestos roofing. Warrants have been issued for the Guptas and at least three of their associates have been arrested and charged. But frustratingly, there's still a long list of government cronies who have been implicated but not yet seen a day in court. Do you concede that at some point there was a failure in the justice system? Yes, that's what the report is saying. There was, I mean... It even says that there's a dearth of prosecutions. The report says that. I mean, you can't um, argue with that. There was no action. The will of justice are turning. There is also a turning point within the NPA and also the Hawks. But is it enough? It's not enough. The Zondo Commission has made clear recommendations on prosecutions, policy and changes to law. But it is important not to forget these recommendations are just that, recommendations. But we've been down this road before. Commissions of inquiries have come and gone. We've seen some prosecutions and some degree of accountability. The question now is, will the Zondo Commission be any different? Perhaps what's different is that our country is on a knife edge. Quick, effective, impactful prosecutions are critical to pulling us back from the edge. How positive are you that we will see successful prosecutions coming out of this Zondo Commission? I'm hoping, in fact, that in the next month there will be at least one really good case and hopefully, you know, at best maybe three. I accept that. There's a huge credibility and trust deficit. But all I want to say to South Africans is look at where we've come from. With many of the main orchestrators of state capture not yet behind bars, the country's patience is running thin and the pressure is on for the NPA to deliver watertight cases. Building these cases is not easy. They do take time. And failure is not an option. That said, there will be cases that we will lose. Not everybody is going to get prosecuted. Some are going to get away scot-free. I think that's the reality. We follow the evidence. And where the evidence takes us, we will prosecute people. We will certainly, in our strategies, aim to prosecute those most responsible for state capture. But at the end of the day, whether everyone is prosecuted, I can't say. And some of those that stand accused of corruption shamelessly try use the law to their advantage in an attempt to evade justice. The law is a double-edged sword. It can be used uh, to protect both the, the innocent and protect um, organizations or individuals with a lot of power. Minister Lamola says his department's mandate is clear. Um, the courts must adjudicate, decisions must be made. The NPA must act without any fear, favor, irrespective of who they are prosecuting. That is what the law says. It's a balancing act between the rights of the accused and the rights of the victims with the interest of justice. We've even been looking at a very, very robust and strong litigation strategy to counter these strategies of defense. It has to be more difficult for accused persons to simply delay and delay without consequences. The Zondo Commission has made it clear that new strategies need to be implemented to protect whistleblowers. Both Temba Maseko and Ethel Williams have been on the receiving end of harassment and threats aimed to silence them. If they intimidate and do worse to whistleblowers, they are hoping that in fact the cases will not succeed in court. We are playing into the hands of the corrupt. We will lose our fight against corruption and state capture if we do not support and protect whistleblowers. If whistleblowers stop coming forward, what does that do for your job? The impact is devastating. Injustice flourishes when good people do nothing. And whistleblowers are good people. But with threats against whistleblowers mounting, on its own, simply changing the law won't cut it. How do we protect them now? And I think it's really important that government, that civil society, that business, 
really all come together to look at how we can provide uh, support and assistance to whistleblowers. It's everybody's problem and everybody should see themselves as the custodians of societal justice and freedom and the sanctity of life and livelihoods. Advocate Batoy is confident that all is not lost. The days of impunity are no longer guaranteed. That it's not about if, but it's about when people will be held to account. We're much better equipped to bring cases more quickly to court now. Please don't lose trust in us. Time alone will tell, and the clock is ticking. Thank you for watching our stories here online, and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.